Morning, welcome back. Look, no more white AI generated looking background. This Lego portrait wasn't actually that hard to build. It just felt like I laid on a bunch of tiny bricks for three days, fingers first. Remember when I first moved in and my setup was wall, one plant, scary blue contacts. Thankfully we're evolving and developing some sort of personality here. Oh no, I'm getting hot. Ah, so enough of me telling you things you didn't ask about. Most of us have probably experienced this. You're minding your own business when all of a sudden someone comes up to you and casually unloads the most gut-wrenching lore about themselves like it was their fast food order. If you're one of the lucky ones who hasn't experienced this before, ooh, I might have some bad news for you. What's the brain version of chemical warfare? Psychology antagonism. What better way to ruin someone's day than with a trauma dumping jump scare? It's okay to listen to your friends rant about things from time to time. Sure, you can bring your drama with my girls in the back, but keep the to a minimum, please. Social media is starting to make us act weird. The newer the generation, the more likely you are to overshare on the internet. I mean, with all this technology right at our fingertips, we're all just one vision pro away from being a permanent citizen of the Kwangya metaverse. What if I get hacked? Being able to connect with more people you'll ever meet in your real life can be both a good thing and a bad thing depending on the situation. Although, do you guys know Stranger Danger? Hi Sam, what's up? Nothing much, you. Now strangers with eyes, ears, and a Wi-Fi connection are the target audience. We seem to have picked up this quirky habit of sharing very vulnerable information on the timeline, specifically content that involves crying on main. That's gonna be, that's gonna make a bit sad video later on. Want to preface this before going any further, there is nothing wrong with crawling into your bed and cosplaying as a sad baby. Letting out your emotions is healthy. I've had some of the best sleeps in my life after a 3 hour cry session, but something about the optics of getting ready to film yourself sobbing while trying to squeeze out some tears? I have more questions than my first read through of Attack on Titan. When I start crying, it feels like my water broke in my eyes. Not a doctor, if you couldn't tell. It's almost impossible for me to stop. Maybe Ghibli characters crying is more realistic than we thought. Do you suck your tears back into your tear ducts and save them for later? When the camera and ring light are finally set up, the thought of someone holding their phone like this while crying every time someone uses selfie mode to film themselves crying. A boomer is about to post a minion meme about the youths and how they're always on their phone. At least with a tripod, it's a little less cringe. I am processing the most triggering breakup I've had in nine years. What was that? James. And yes, I understand we all process emotions differently. Some will repress all the negative emotions they've ever felt deep into their soul. Ah, guilty. Some will film it and show it to strangers. I wouldn't call myself a huge Taylor Swift fan, but I can recite her first three albums by heart. They've been lasered directly into my brain. A Swifty recently went viral for filming herself reacting to Taylor Swift playing one of her favorite songs at a concert. For context, this expensive concert does have seats. I think they weren't able to get tickets to the show, so they sat outside the stadium. <laughs> Um, <laughs> their faces. <laughs> so that was a lot out of nowhere. If there's anything relatable about this at all, is her friend's face. This is literally how I would react if someone I knew had an outburst like this in public. Just, um, they're there with broom. There. I don't know what she went through, but objectively, this is a lot for someone to take in. There's something creepily performative about setting this up in advance so you can film yourself doing this. I mean, your phone didn't just fall out of your pocket and land upright and hit record by itself. The latter half is a lot less insane. <laughs> what am I gonna do now?
Although, I've been to K-pop concerts before, you'd have the same, or worse, reaction from seeing Jungkook rip off his shirt. Nick Jonas fans had full-on meltdowns after he did his diabetes reveal. They literally thought he was on his deathbed. But her screams were so loud, they echoed all the way into other people's TikToks. So what am I defending now? You are my town, now I'm in exhausting you out. Y'all hear something? Because I can hear something. According to the most reliable source on the internet, Popcrave, the girl in the video laughed about it too. Hey, Alista gave us some material to make memes out of. <laughs> Taylor Swift announces new album cover for her new album. If you wanted to know how chronically online you are, those last two were a test. So this is a rising trend of something called sad fishing, where you try to fish for sympathy and attention by posting your emotional pain online. We've seen this before, those cryptic Facebook updates from that acquaintance you talked to once. What exactly do you mean when you update your status as, once I get my hands on you for ruining my life, it's over. Don't ask. You're dropping this cliffhanger and leaving? Aw, don't do that. This is like torture for nosy people. Now, it's manifested itself into its own subgenre of TikToks called Trauma Talk, where we sort of normalized posting extremely traumatic events, then doing a Shein haul five minutes later. No need for roller coasters now, when we can cry, laugh, and angry in 15 seconds. While it's good to express yourself and be vulnerable at times, it's starting to desensitize us to emotions that should be kept private or within a small group of friends, and not shared with randoms. A normal social media user doesn't think to themselves, I sure hope a stranger shares some really devastating information with me today. I actually like to pay for the person behind me. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for homicide victims and my husband was brutally killed. So um, I just wanted to give some love today and I hope that, you know, if anybody that you lost and I, I feel like there is somebody and she's watching you. She's watching you all the time and she loves you. So, um, this is for the people behind me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I actually record these things. Can, can you say hi to people? <laughs> this is Trinity. <laughs> we need more kindness. If we have a shortage of fast food workers in the next few years, we'll know why. I've worked retail before, where I would have to interact with customers for about 90% of my shift. Some of the stuff people told me, unprovoked, I should have been getting paid therapist fees at one point. Here are some reasons why people might act this way. Sad fishing can be caused by many things. The main reason being that someone doesn't get enough attention and or has low self-respect. This is proven by the fact that people sad fishing are looking for compliments, very close to narcissistic behavior, but with desire for compliments from other people for self satisfaction. Research has found that individuals engaging in sad fishing tend to have an anxious attachment style. And you know, not everyone that posts sad things about themselves would be to this extreme. Taking a crying selfie once in a while is fine. Sometimes it is funny to look back and think, wow, what a mess. I'm so glad we moved past that. As annoying human beings, we all want attention to some degree. Unfortunately, a support system in real life isn't something everyone has. You can't just buy it at the store, so you turn to strangers on the internet instead. If you show that you're sad, generally most people are nice if they see someone in distress, because it's the polite thing to do. Except there are sketchy ways people will trauma dump with ulterior motives. In the dark ages, Instagram was first brought into the world. These were unsettling times when the first photo in your camera roll would be acceptable on your feed. There was no such thing as a black and white theme or a concept. Celebrities were posting whatever, with the sepia filter slapped onto chocolate bars. Then we evolved into curated highlight reels, where everyone you know was suddenly living a lavish lifestyle, when in reality, all the garbage in the room was pushed to the side. Then we got sick of that and started showing ourselves at our worst, which is trendy and in now. The the secret sauce is authenticity, pretty much the key ingredient for amassing a strong fan base. If the audience can see, oh, you're relatable and just like them, they'll be able to connect with you even more. But we've also become very good at sniffing out people who are faking it. Back in 2019, Kendall Jenner put out a very emotional teaser of her being vulnerable about something vague. Just take a look and try and guess what this is for. Um, when I was 14, I couldn't reach as many people as I can now. Now that I'm 22 and I have this whole thing behind me, I can, I can speak to so many people and just be like, I can help you and it's okay. And I've, and I experience it. I'm very normal. And like, I understand you. Like I can connect with you. I'm going to try and help. 
turns out the big reveal was a coming out announcement of her having acne. And now she has been promoted. <laughs> she is now an elite employee of Proactive and the owner of a pretty fat check, I'm assuming. While there are a few points I agree with on her Instagram post, a lot of people found it to be a little disingenuous and potentially sad fishing. How exactly are we supposed to react when one of the richest people in the world is sad? about her acne, when her audience is struggling to even make one one thousandth of her net worth. Yes, it's nice to see that celebrities are human too, but other than a few pimples, Kendall is not the same as 99.9% .9 of the population. Not to mention she's part of the Kardashians, who are well known for photoshopping themselves to look unrealistically pretty. Bella Hadid had sort of a similar situation where she posted a crying selfie, which was received better by audiences. Maybe it seemed more genuine because it wasn't a teaser for a brand partnership. Even psychologists are conflicted. Using too much social media is bad for your mental health, but when people keep having public breakdowns online, could that be a thing that causes more mental health issues? Or are people able to find relief by connecting with others? There are situations in which seeing this content, crying selfies, online could be validating for others, but keep in mind that it could be triggering as well. I would suggest applying filters that allow friends to opt into this content and keeping it to an audience that you can trust is safe, because it's not simply about getting support, it's about getting the right support. Above all, Seek the help you need professionally and get a therapist. It's like putting a band-aid on your arm that fell off. It might feel okay temporarily, but if you start relying on strangers to make you feel better, you're gonna end up in a pretty toxic cycle. Our gauge of how much we should actually share online is leading to some pretty awkward situations. What would you do as a CEO after laying a bunch of your staff off? If your answer is to post a selfie of yourself crying, are you the CEO watching my video? CEO posts crying selfie on LinkedIn after laying off employees and it goes viral. This will be one of the most vulnerable things I'll ever share. I've gone back and forth whether to post this or not. We just had to lay off a few of our employees. I've seen a lot of layoffs over the last few weeks on LinkedIn. Most of those are due to the economy or whatever other reason. Ours? My fault. Uh... There was not one person you could have shared this with. I don't doubt that he was genuinely sad here, but oh my god, time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner. How many selfies were taken here, I wonder? I don't even want to picture it if it's more than one. The optics here are not good, like my eyesight. When you're a well-off CEO who still has a job, while tons of your staff got demoted to fired, it's hard for the public to feel bad for you. Are we at that stage with social media where everything is a vulnerability competition on who can overshare the most? Digital footprints and privacy is something we've taken for granted. Sit in silence with someone for 10 minutes and they will start sharing their deepest darkest secrets. Like I said, we all process emotions differently. If sharing your sad experiences with strangers does actually help you mentally, sure, post those crying selfies. It's okay to do it once in a while, but if it becomes a regular seven days a week routine, maybe talk to someone in person, or seek professional help instead of looking for validation from random strangers. Everyone loves some attention to a degree, but the people you dump your extreme feelings onto, especially randoms who never ask, they reserve the right to say, Stop it. Get some help. Social media is already so fake and dystopian, more proof that we're living in a simulation. Kinda like how all content creators live their lives in service to the YouTube algorithm. If you found this video interesting, feed the algorithm one awkward attempt at comforting your friend by liking this video. That way, I'll get to pop up in your recommended the next time I post. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and see you in the next one.